All right, hey, what's up, YouTube? Patrick here, and today we're going to be doing a wash of cannabis flour to make a hash. Now, there's different names for the for what I'm making today: water hash, ice hash, bubble hash. But basically, they're all where you use water and ice to extract the trichromes off of the cannabis flower. And so you have a concentrated form of cannabis. So then you don't have to smoke as much. Um, it doesn't smell as much because you're not burning all that flour. It's probably healthier for you because you're not inhaling all that flour. And then also you can use it then in edibles and tinctures and stuff like that where when you use the cannabis flower it gets this kind of chlorophyll grassy flavor this uh, kind of leaves that out and then you can have tasty treats that don't taste like grass so i've been making hash now probably for a couple years um off and on and everything i've learned i've learned from either youtube and mainly a frenchy cannoli video that i'll put a link for up top right here um, and then just in-person trials experience from making mistakes and just trying it out and seeing what happens um, So I have a little bit of experience I'm still learning stuff every time and I feel like I've created a pretty efficient way of washing and I'd like to share it with you guys step by step in detail um, explain why I do things the way I do them and uh, Show you like what I can make with my system and hopefully if it works for you, you know, you might try it out someday. It's a lot of fun. And I just love having the process from beginning to end from a, a, a clone all the way to hash at the end. And then I press it into live rosin, smoking my own stuff that I grew myself, processed myself. I know exactly what happened to it. And it's way cheaper than when you buy it at the store. Now the stuff, the prices at the store make sense when it's from my end because it is a lot of work and a lot of love and a lot of time that goes into that little gram that you buy at the store or whatever. So what am I doing today? So today we're going to do a full run of hash um, where I take a batch of flour, I put it through the washing machine, I do three cycles, one for three minutes, one for five minutes, and one for eight minutes. And then after that, you dispose of that flour, collect your uh, hash, and then get it into the dryer. So I have a freeze dryer, a Harvest Right freeze dryer. I have the small one. Um, I've never made hash without it, so I don't know how to air dry and all that. And the reason I got it was because I hear the air drying is, it can be complicated unless you can control the, the temperature and humidity in the space that the stuff's drying in. But that could be hard when you live in an apartment and stuff like that. So I just got the freeze dryer. I did the investment. I think this one was like $2,300, but it's paying off now because now I have it and it's going to last a very long time for me. So I'll take you through that wash, uh, show you exactly what I do and how I do it. And then we'll show you the results at the end of the hash that we get at the end. So today I'm going to be washing my Baker's Delight because I, it's going to number one, give us a high yield because it's a good amount of flour. And number two, it's a really dank uh, flour that makes some really good hash. So I'm excited to show you guys what it what uh, what comes of it. Okay, so quickly I'm going to go over the equipment and supplies you need to do or what I'm using today. Um, the first thing is your bags. Now bubble bags, there's a lot of different microns and it can seem confusing uh, at first. But I have links in the description for the ones that I'm using today. These Robin, Rosin Revolution, it's a four bag set. It has 220, 160, and 45 are the three I'm using today. I think there's one in the middle, like 120, but I'm not collecting that today. Um, so with my three bag set, the 220 is the biggest microns. It collects the leaves and, and garbage up at the top so that it keeps it from going to the hash and it's just bigger chunks of stuff. You throw that away. The 160 will collect big head glands between 160 and 220 uh, microns. And those you can use for edibles or tinctures, so I save those. And then the 45 will collect everything below that to 45. Um, and that's called a full spectrum, that's what people call it, um, hash, because it has all the different micron sizes. So you can buy bags for everything. Uh, there's a 70 bag, there's a 90 bag, 120, uh, and there's a bunch in between. Um, you can collect each one individually if you want, 
that's just a lot more work and it's not really what I'm going for in this process here. So I'm just going for yield, um, you know, quality as well, but I'm not trying to get out the 90U because that's supposed to be the best. Uh, I'll do that someday, but just not today. So I also posted in the description a couple other sets of bags. Um, the light set by Bubble Man, um, Fresh Headies is the one that I have on order right now and I was waiting for it, but it was on back order and I harvested my outdoor and I was still waiting for the bags and I couldn't wait so I ordered these Rosin Revolution ones but the light uh, Bubble Man has really good bags and I also posted the original 8 bag set which I do have I just can't find somewhere in my stuff in my storage and um, but that one's the most expensive it's like I think it's like $360 um, but the quality is what matters if you buy these cheap ones off Amazon if you look at under a microscope uh, like the ones you scope your trichomes with, you can see that the squares are not perfectly square and they're all different sizes and weird on those Chinese like $10 a bag ones. Whereas if you look at these or the Fresh Headies ones, they're all perfect squares. And that's what you're paying for is the quality because you want when you're collecting a certain micron size or you want a certain micron size to pass through the filter, you don't want wonky squares where different stuff's going to pass through, you know. You want that exact micron size. So you got to pay a little bit. Uh, these Rosin Revolution bags were relatively cheap. Uh, cheaper compared to other ones. And if you get a small bag set, like a four bag set, you can even buy individual bags if you just want like a two or three bag set. I think that at minimum you probably should go with a three bag set like I have here. And it works perfectly and you get a high yield and you get really good quality stuff. So... That's the bags. The next thing I would say is the machine. Now the bubble machine that I have is from Fresh Headies again, Bubble Man. Um, but you can order the same thing off Amazon. They have a bunch of different, they're all just ripoffs now, but it's just a little blue mini uh, washing machine. And it's called a five gallon, but it holds four gallons with the flowers. And so you do smaller batches. If you're running huge batches, they have bigger washing machines and they also have bigger bag sets. So that's the machine. Now on to this bucket system here. My bucket system I got off of Frenchy Cannoli. And it's basically you have a large tub at the bottom. You have a, 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 some sort of screen on top to hold the buckets. And then the bottom bucket, I drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom. So that the water can drain through and it's a full bucket. And then each consecutive bucket going up it's shorter and shorter as I cut them shorter and shorter so that when you pull them out the top one's the shortest the next one's a little longer but basically then you put your bags on there and it's like a little rim so it's easier to deal with the bags they're not stacked right on top of each other when you're washing so the stuff's separate so you don't get some hash stuck to the bottom of a bag and then when you, so it just makes it easier for collecting and for working um, so each one has basically its own bucket and then this one's the deepest one the 45 so that's how I do it then when you wash and you collect you can just take them off put them back on and it's super easy I do keep a lid on um, to keep dust and stuff from getting in there and you obviously want to keep your bags washed and dry um, which I'll go over toward the end how I wash my bags with isopropyl alcohol Okay, so the last bit of supplies you're going to need is a couple of spoons. I have larger kind of soup spoons and you have to throw them in the freezer. Uh, you want them to be nice and cold so that when you're scooping, if the spoons are warm, they kind of melt the trichomes and make it harder to scoop. So you want everything as cold as possible. I'm working in my garage right now and it's like 30 degrees outside, so it's nice and cold in here too. And you also need parchment paper to scoop the stuff onto. If you're air drying, that's where you'll dry it. Um, and then if you're using the freeze dryer, there's trays. Obviously, I line the trays with parchment paper, scoop it on there, and then just put it into the dryer after I pre-freeze it. And then the last thing would be a scale. I have a good analytical scale here that goes up to 5,000 grams. Um, it's good to invest in a good scale so you know you're accurate with everything you're doing. And other than that, I think that's about it. So the last thing that I want to go over, though, is the ice and water you use. So 
when I first started learning this, I used RO water exclusively and then the bagged ice you buy at the store that's supposed to be RO water. And that was all good and fine. They say to use the cleanest water and ice you can and this and that. So that's what I did. But now I'm at my parents' house and I don't have the option to use RO water right now. I do have the same bagged ice from the store, but I'm using the hose. And it's honestly made it a lot easier because when you're spraying down the buckets, when you're spraying down the bags to get everything rinsed through, you have a higher pressure than before I was using a little pump sprayer and it's just a lot more work. Um, when I'm doing each batch though, I fill the washing machine once with water and then have the ice in there and then I reuse that water for the three washes. So I'm not using new water every time because the water is already cold, it's not that dirty and you can reuse it. And then after that third wash, that's when I dump it and start on the next batch of flour. So yeah, you guys make your own decision, but like I said, I'm finding that with tap water, it seems to be doing great quality. Um, I don't know what could be uh, left over in the hash at the end, that it's, it's so bad. So I'm just gonna keep going with this for now. And uh, until I learn otherwise, you know, I'm just going to keep going with tap water. I don't see the problem. So that's all for the supplies and everything. Now we're going to go ahead and get the flour out and get to washing. So I have the Baker's Delight in the freezer. I'll go grab it and show you guys what we're working with. But like I said, today I'm going to be doing a few washes, but I'm just going to show you guys one run through, how it works straight through. We'll also weigh it out um, so that we know how much yield we get at the end. Okay, I'm going to weigh this really quickly. Okay, 1,068 grams. So since I have 1,068 grams here, I'm going to split that in half. Okay, so we'll do two, two batches of 534 grams each. So I'm going to go ahead and weigh 534 grams out into this tub here. And we'll get into the washing machine. Okay. Got 534 grams. I'm gonna throw that in the machine. But first, before I put the flour in the machine, I put a thin layer of ice on the bottom. Uh, you don't want to put in too much ice. This is where it comes down to the ice to water ratio. Because if you have too much ice, it's gonna make this grinding occur inside with the flour, and that's gonna break off more plant material, make the water dirtier, and your hash dirtier. So you want to have as little ice as possible in there to keep the water ice cold because the water is what is knocking the trichromes off of the flour and it's what's the solvent in this uh, extraction method. The ice is just there to keep the water as cold as possible. So we want as little ice as possible and I'll show you once we get going what sound you want to hear while it's going. You want to hear more of a clinking of the ice. You don't want to hear any sort of grinding so let me put a little bit of ice in here and then we'll put the flour in. Okay, got the thin layer of ice. Now I'll add the flour. This stuff smells so good, guys. This is gonna be some excellent hash. Okay, kind of spread it around a little bit. Let me show you guys what we're looking at here. So I've got the flour in there with the ice. Now I'm going to top it off with water. So now with the water, we don't want to overflow. And I put it over to the side so that as it fills, it's not agitating stuff. Just put it in the corner and let it fill. And then you want to fill this hose is open. And so it can only fill to right below the top of this hose or it'll overflow out of the hose. So it holds about four gallons with the flour in there. And so once I have this full, then we'll let it sit for a few minutes to let the ice make the water as cold as possible. And we'll uh, turn it on, do our three minute, our five minute, and then our eight minute runs. Okay, almost overfilled it. Okay, so let's let this sit for a minute and we'll be right back. Okay, we've had this sit for a few minutes and it's nice and ice cold, so I'm gonna turn it on and set the timer for three minutes. So let me get the timer set. 
turn it on. So if you were if you were just going for quality, what you could do is you could collect after each wash, each of the three washes, and the first wash will give you the best quality hash, the second will be a little worse, and the third will be a little worse. Um, but since I'm just going for overall yield, I'm not trying to collect separately to keep them separate. I just want it all together and I'm gonna press it all together and the quality is still really good. So as you can hear with the machine, you can't hear any grinding. You can just hear a little tinkle tinkle of ice hitting the sides. And that's what you want. But when it goes totally quiet, you gotta add just a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna add a little bit. Now like I said, if you add too much, You'll get a grinding, uh, your, your flour will just get all mashed up, and your water will get very dirty. Um, so once this three minutes is up, we'll go ahead and rinse down into our bucket. And then I'm going to reuse the water, so I'm going to lift the tub up, dump the water back in, and I'm going to do that for all three washes. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, the timer just went off for the three minutes, so let's go ahead and empty. So again, this top bag is the 220, which is just going to collect all this leaf material and the big stuff that you don't want. The next one down is the 160 bag, and that's going to collect the bigger trichomes that you can use for edibles and tinctures. And then the bottom bag is the one that's going to collect all the good stuff. So they're stacked on top of each other, so as the water runs through, the smaller heads keep going through until they get caught in whatever micron and then the bigger stuff stays at the top. And then so the water is draining down into the bucket below, into the tub, and I'm gonna reuse that water here in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and dump the water back in and get it set up for the second wash. Okay, that was the first wash. Now we'll do a five minute wash, set the timer, turn the machine on. And again, I'll listen for the ice to melt. I just added a big chunk at the end, so I think it should be good. But maybe toward the end, I'll have to add a little more. But we'll come back in a few minutes and do the second collection. All right, timer's off. This is the five minute wash. Go ahead and drain it out. Now I tap this tube because it has ribs in it. And I feel like the hash will get caught in those ribs as it's coming out. And I'm going to replace the tube, but haven't yet. So I just kind of tap it so that if anything is getting caught in those ridges, it'll hopefully come through. I can see a little bit of a gold tint to the water. So that means that's good. That means that I got a good amount of hash in there. So the longer washes usually have, you know, get more out but the quality starts to go down because you get more contaminants in there. But if you know how to wash it correctly, rinse out the bags, you can clean it up at the end, which I'll show you. So that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and refill the water again. So sometimes as the pores start to get clogged in the lower bags, They'll, it's slow to drain, so something you can do is just kind of give it a little lift and a pop. And this kind of lifts the water and the trichomes out of the holes for a second to let the water flow through. Okay. I'll go ahead and refill the water and we'll do our eight minute wash. Okay, I'm going to set the timer for eight minutes and turn the machine off. I'm going to add a little more ice and then we'll come back and we'll do the final collection and then we'll go through and actually collect the hash. Oops. Okay, so we'll be back. Okay, eight minutes is up. Let's go ahead and drain this final wash and then we'll wash it all down, rinse it all through and collect it. So you can see that little bit of a gold tint in the water right there. That's the hash. So I'm hoping for a pretty good pull here. I think when I did it last time I just had one small plant. But I think that it yielded well and that's why I wanted to keep it so bad. 
the quality was really awesome too but I'm pretty sure that it was a good yield or so so and remember this is only half I have the other half in the freezer that I'm gonna wash next so we'll get it all drained out okay now let's rinse so I'm gonna go through and rinse this out really well so if there's any trichomes in there I want to push them through so it's good to have a little bit of a higher pressure You'd be a little rough with it because you're really trying to wash the trichomes through, get them out of any nicks and crannies. Wash down the sides, just give it a really good rinse. Okay, so now this is trash, so when I pull this bag, I'm just going to dump this in the trash. There we go, that bag's cleaned out. Set that aside. Now there's a lot of water collecting on the bottom, which is a good thing because that means that the hash is clogging the holes. So I'm going to do this way, clear out some of that water. You can also kind of twirl it. You got to have some patience with this. Okay, now I'm going to rinse this second bag doing the same thing. You want to wash any smaller heads down through into the next bag. And then you're also pushing it into the center so you can collect it with a spoon. So let me pull this bag a little tighter. Sometimes it's kind of difficult. Especially with gloves on. Okay. Let me go grab my frozen spoon. So now since this is a lower quality stuff, you don't want to have it mixed in with your good quality stuff. So I put it to the side by itself on the freeze dryer tray. So I'm going to give it another rinse down and get another little scoop of it. This is another, re you want to use colder water when doing this because if you have warm water, it's just going to melt the trichomes to the bag and you're not going to be able to get them out. Okay. So I'm going to pull this bag, if I can. Sometimes these are a pain. Okay, set that bag aside. Now you can see the goodness in here. This is super light. It looks like a good amount. So rinse down the sides of the bag. And you also want to give this a good rinse, because this is how you can clean out if you have dirty, if you have dirty hash. Rinsing out any impurities at the bottom will help clean it up. And this is again, per Frenchy Cannoli's video, he goes over these same tips and tricks. But I want to go ahead and give these, give it a good agitation, rinsing any dirty impurities down through, and keeping hopefully just the clean trichrome heads here up at the top. Make sure you get the sides of the bag. Okay, I'm going to pull this up tighter. Now let's just give it a little agitation. You want some li you want it kind of liquidy but not super liquidy. And you want to spread it out thin on your freeze dryer trays cuz I've learned that if you go too thick, you'll have ice chunks in the bottom and it won't dry properly. So you want a nice thin, thin patties. So I'll even kind of squish them down like that. Okay, and now you can rinse spoon off as well as it gets kind of caked. And this is why you have two spoons. So now I'll go put this one back in the freezer and I'll grab my second spoon. Rinse it back down into the center. Let me swap my spoon. Okay. Get some more of this water out. You got to do this a couple times to try and get as much as you can. Okay, I'm going to call that good. And now when I clean these bags into the little tub of isopropyl alcohol, 
eventually I can boil that down and be able to reuse this so you're not losing anything even though there's a little bit still in there and yeah so that's what my tray looks like got a nice patty I'm gonna throw this in the freezer to pre-freeze it before I put it in the dryer and I'm gonna move on to that second wash so let me throw this in the freezer and I'm gonna get the bags cleaned okay so for cleaning the bags basically I have this tub of isopropyl alcohol and when you pull it out of the bag you put it face down into the isopropyl alcohol and just give it a good kind of scrub it against itself swish it around in the iso the entire bottom section and then this will clean it out and then you take it and rinse it under the sink really well to get any iso off and you do this with all three of your bags and then put them back on their rims stacked back up and you're set for your next wash so I'm gonna go ahead and wash the other two bags get it set up do my other wash for the day once I get everything in the freeze dryer or once I get everything out of the freeze dryer I'll show you guys what we get at the end and our yields and stuff but that's the basics of washing I'm gonna go ahead and get to work we'll see you once it's done all right hey what's up guys so it's the next day I let the freeze dryer go for probably an extra eight hours after it was done and now it should be fully dry and I'll show it to you right here and then we'll go ahead and get it weighed out and see what our yield was okay so I have a little plastic tub that I'll weigh it out into so I'm just gonna zero this out and then I'm just gonna take this parchment straight up and dump it in there and then you do want to scrape there's still a good amount on there so you want to scrape it down to one side and then dump that out too so we're at 56 grams okay so we got 56 grams of hash here that was one full plant my outdoor plant this year my second outdoor plant I started with 1,068 grams of fresh frozen flour and I came out with 56 grams of bubble hash and that is a yield of 5.2% which uh, average yields are 2 to 4% anything above 5% is good so I'd say my baker's delight is a keeper still um, and the hash looks really nice and golden so it's going to make some really good live rosin which I'll make another video of uh, here in the future. But I guess that's all for my video on making bubble hash. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below in the comments. And, uh, and obviously I appreciate if you like and subscribe. Um, I really enjoy making these videos for you guys. And I hope you enjoy them too. So yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you next time. All right.